Good afternoon. It's my pleasure to welcome everyone here tonight on behalf of Peak County Commissioners. I call this meeting to order. Let's have our roll call, please. It's not working. I'll just note that everyone is present. Okay. Very good. Are there any additions? No, before that, though. Dr. Johnson, will you do the invocation? And Mr. Colson, will you do the pledge? Let's stand, May please. We stand. <clears throat> For all the many blessings of life, we are truly grateful. We pray for all people of the world, but especially as we do business this evening for the citizens of Pitt County. Uh, we <coughs> do our very best to keep in mind all citizens of this county as we do our business. God and direct us as we continue our meeting. Amen. Face the flag, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Manager, are there any uh, corrections or additions to the agenda? Yes, sir. Do we have a motion, motion for approval? to approve? Second. Motion's been mowed and second. Uh, let's vote. <clears throat> we have a list for public address to the board, Mr. Manager. Will you give the first one, please? Yes, sir. At this time, we have three people signed up. Um, Keith Cooper will come forward, and his attorney will read the um, public address to the board statement. Yes. Um, Pitt County welcomes matters, all comments on all matters of public concern. I will keep your time to three minutes um, <coughs> for the board's rules of procedure. <coughs> okay. Yes, and that first vote re really counted as your roll call. If the board would vote again, then that would record it for the system. That was our discussion, so you've corrected it. Thank you. Uh, Reverend Hammond? Mm-hmm. And Mr. Malahorn? Very good. Thank you all. Yes, sir. Uh, good evening. Uh, Dr. Martin Luther King often said <clears throat> the uh, ultimate test of a man is not where he stands in times of comfort and convenience. It is where he stands in times of challenge and controversy. This county has faced countless cri crises over the years, crises. Indeed, we have experienced many trials and tribulations. I recall the recent encounter between County Commissioner Tom Johnson and Grifton resident Marie Lewis where Ms. Lewis alleged that Mr. Johnson accosted her and poked his finger in her chest at a County Commissioner's meeting. Do you know that a Pitt County Human Relations Council could have resolved that dispute? Shirley Mitchell, Mayor of Fountain, shared in a recent telephone conversation that a relative of hers had trouble getting in and out of a Pat's van and that many indigent citizens complained about paying to go to and from medical centers in Greenville. This is the city mayor of Fountain who has these concerns. Do you know that a countywide council really could help the needy, hardworking people of Fountain the city of Greenville has had a Human Relations Council for 42 years. If the council is good enough for Greenville, it is good enough for Fountain. It is good enough for Winneville. It is good enough for Grifton. It is good enough for Bethel. It is good enough for the village of Simpson and all municipalities throughout Pitt County. We have a moral obligation to take care of our disabled veterans who fought feverishly and valiantly so that we may live and enjoy the quality of life we have today. A Human Relations Council could coordinate all the various services for our disabled veterans under one umbrella. <coughs> Additionally, <coughs> such a council would educate senior citizens about the existing services for home repairs, such as those offered through the USDA uh, 504 Home Repair 
a program through rural development. A human relations council could also sponsor programs to help citizens avoid home foreclosure and help the vulnerable youth find gainful employment and avoid violence, hence reducing violence within the county. Folks, this is not rocket science. The Bible and other sacred texts admonish us to help the least of these. We must be our brother's keeper. Let's be like the Good Samaritan in Luke 10, 25 to 37, who patched the wounds of a man who had fallen among thieves. After a priest and Levite passed by and left the man to fend for himself, a Good Samaritan showed compassion for that man by patching his wounds and paying his expenses for the night. In a nutshell, in conclusion, I ask that you spare your constituents the aforesaid indignities by supporting a countywide human relations council. Let's put principles above politics and do God's work, which is our work. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Who's next, Ms. Twain? Next we have Angela Cooper. Greetings, Commissioner. My name is Angela Cooper, and I normally don't speak, but I thought I would speak during this commissioner's meeting. Um, you're all invited. We're not having a general invite. We're not doing personal invitations. It's our um, 11th annual Senior Citizens Appreciation Ceremony. We're having it at the CMF's Recreation Center on Monday, May the 5th, from 11 to 2 p.m. You're all welcome to come out, even to the general public. On Tuesday, May the 6th, we're having a Stop the Violence rally over at the CMF's outside. We're going to feed people for maybe between 350 to 400 people, and we feed meals. We're going to have probably baked spaghetti, red beans and rice, string beans, and dinner rolls, and we'll drink water since it's outside. So we're inviting the general public because we are having a Stop the Violence rally. Um, more so in that area, we're dealing with black-on-black -black violence and domestic violence violence because of the area. A lot of people say, well, we don't condone any violence. But for that particular area that we're in, that's the type of crimes that go on. So we're going to have street ministries. We'll give out Bibles. We've got some for the Gideons or whatever. And we'll have different people, a mass feeding. So we invite everybody to come out. Those who don't have a meal who are homeless will feed you that day. And because food is definitely a problem in homelessness in Greenville, so that's why we're reaching out to people on that particular day. There's so many activities, so we include the general public. The other thing, too, that, I'm, that concerns me, the Dale Reflector did a wonderful story on Keith today, Mr. Keith Cooper, my husband. And I'm asking them, and I already talked to the reporter, that any stories about social services, please do not put my husband's picture up to any mass media. My husband is African-American descent. Negative stories about social services, I do, we do not approve of. If it was a possible, my family members saw this and said, oh, we saw Keith's picture. And I was at the last commissioner's meeting, and it was not good. Any story about SNAP and social services, did not put my husband, who's an African-American, pitch up there because he looks nothing like Mr. Merritt. So I'm throwing this out to Dale Reflector and a reporter. So it's not, I appreciate what you do with Keith, and I, I understand that. But please, nothing related to social services right now. And my suggestion about the SNAP, last time I was here, they were talking about the backlog and all this, want to hire people. Why don't, if people have been waiting a long time, just go ahead and approve them. You can always do a redetermination in 60, 90 days and tell them it's contingent upon whether or not they meet the criteria. That way you won't have 100 million complaints. People are hungry. They're starving. Why not do that? And you'll, you'll eliminate a lot of complaints. Then do a redetermination then you don't have to worry about that. If they don't qualify, you cut them off then. If they commit a fraud, then you do whatever, have them pay it back. But please, please just go ahead and approve everybody, and that'll solve your problem, and it'll solve the complaints. And I don't know if you'll take my suggestion, but um, definitely you're talking about people are hungry. So if you want to come out and eat, we'll feed you that day. And thank you, and God bless you. Thank you, ma'am. <coughs> Who's next, Mr. Mayor? Next we have, um, I believe it's Darren or Doreen Day. Uh, yes. <clears throat> good afternoon or good evening. Uh, it's actually Daron Dancy, oh. and I'm here representing the local Disabled American Veterans chapter here in Greenville. Mm -hmm. um, DAV, we're located on Cemetery Road, and I wanted to show support to Mr. Cooper for the efforts that he's uh, attempting to make uh, with starting the Countywide Human Relations um, Committee. Um, DAV, basically, we are a liaison uh, between a, a veteran um, and the VA. Uh, we help these veterans with all type of assistance um, uh, following their military claims, um, hardship, uh, providing money to them um, if they're not able to make their, uh, their certain bills. 
and we're nonprofit, of course. And what we're seeing is there's a huge um, trend, uh, influx of veterans, um, different age groups um, coming into our chapter for assistance from the different areas that Mr. Cooper mentioned uh, of Pitt County. And so I think it would be a great uh, uh, help for us as, as disabled veterans um, to have such a committee. Um, there's, there's actually a, a lot, um, and I think, you know, the public, the mass public does not recognize um, the, uh, uh, the number of veterans here in Pitt County that are hurting. Um, these guys are looking for help, and we feel that the VA uh, is not always our friend, and we're in constant fight with them nationally. Um, and so at, at this county level, that would be a great support to us that would enable us to continue to support the veterans of the surrounding uh, towns and, uh, and Pitt County. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Appreciate your good work. Uh, Ms. Booker. The Pitt County fiscal year today, July 2013 through March 2014, combined collection rate for current year taxes on real and personal property as well as registered motor vehicles is 96.38%, an increase as compared to the rate one year ago of 95.1%. Pitt County Tax Administration continues to pursue all outstanding taxes using the necessary enforcement remedies available through the North Carolina General Statutes. Do we have, have motion for approval? So moved. Second. I second it. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Mass. <clears throat> Mr. Chair, members of the uh, county commissioners and guests, uh, it's my pleasure to address you once more on behalf of Pitt Community College. Uh, I have uh, a few points to make, but this is really a glorious time of the year for Pitt Community College. We've had our academic excellence ceremony. We've had our pinning ceremonies. Uh, we are working towards graduation. And I'm proud to say that we will have about 30 additional graduates this year compared to last year. So we're continuing to grow. And that's our goal, is to uh, turn out as many people with degrees and certifications as possible to really become productive citizens and contributors to our economy. Uh, one of the things that we're working on very closely with Superintendent Ethan Lenker is connections with Pitt County Schools. And I'm proud to say that we are going to be expanding our career and technical education programs in several of the high schools starting next year. In the fall, we'll be offering welding program, welding technology at Aiden Grifton High School for the first time. And we'll also be offering at Farmville Central High School um, electrical program. Uh, we're looking to expand our career and technical programs within the high schools, as well as our university transfer program, because we feel that if students get a running start on college while they're in high school, they'll more likely uh, finish their degree, finish their certificate, and go into the workforce and be productive citizens. So Dr. Lenker has been a great partner for Pitt Community College, and I'm looking forward to doing even more with him in the future. I want to give you just a quick update on our science building, and thank you so much for your support. The bond referendum last year, our uh, ability to convince the voters to move forward with support of the science building. We're in the planning stages right now. Uh, we've contracted with not only local architect John Farkas, but also with some lab specialists from Atlanta that, uh, in a group called HERA, and they have been very helpful in working with our faculty to make sure that we're going to develop the uh, most impressive building that we can, serving all levels of students in the community. Uh, science is a broader term than it was in the past. STEM, science technology, uh, engineering, and math means a lot to Pitt Community College. You probably heard recently that East Carolina University is renaming their College of Technology, College of Engineering. And we are one of the strongest uh, contributors of students among transfer students to that, that program, and we want to continue that momentum. Uh, we are also working uh, in conjunction with a number of entities in the community, particularly the Department of Employment Solutions, 
on something called the Career Readiness Certificate. And I think we've <coughs> talked to you about that before. That's a way that connects people who are looking for jobs, analyzes their skills in a quick way, and then connects them with employers. Uh, that has been a very successful program, not only working with high school students, pre-college students, but with people that are already in the workforce looking for jobs. We know that there are still a lot of people in our society, in our county, <coughs> who are hurting, who are looking for help, who want to do productive work, and we want to connect them with those job opportunities that are out there. That's why I'm so pleased with the announcement that Governor McCrory made last week that will connect the community college system more closely with the North Carolina Department of Commerce. Don't know whether you uh, saw that or not, but there's been launched a new program called NC Works, which will consolidate many of the department's uh, workforce development functions into a one-stop shop for job sectors and job creators, uh, not just people looking for jobs, but employers across the state. Uh, NC Works will help both businesses and individuals by combining efforts in, by the state, the community college system, and businesses into a single website. NC Works will host two massive databases. One's for the workers who will list their skills, experience, education, and other information. The other databases for businesses, uh, you, listing what they do uh, what kinds of jobs they need to fill and what skills or experience or pot a potential candidate should have. That's that skills gap that you've read about. We're trying to address that. I think we're having some success in doing that. Once implemented, workers can search generally by industry or area and specifically by certain skills or education levels. Businesses can narrow their searches intensely as well. Uh, even winnowing candidates field down by a candidate's preferred salary targets, status as a veteran, and, and more. Uh, these are ways that we'll be able to enhance and make productive our workforce. Mm -hmm. NC Works will also allow a coordination with the Department of Commerce in terms of economic development, not just workforce development. Ways that we can exist, not only current companies in our area, but companies we're trying to attract to Pitt County. That's why I'm so eager to work with the Economic Development Board as well as other, other entities that will make us a more high-performing area. And uh, we certainly need that in these days when there's plenty of competition, even within North Carolina, uh, let alone from outside the state. So we're working in a lot of different areas to serve you, to serve the citizens of Pitt County, and I think we're making some progress. Uh, I look forward to reporting to you again in the fall about our progress in our science building construction and other projects. Uh, I feel very positive about where, what we're doing and how we're, how we're doing it. And when I started, I rushed in and got started and I wanted to recognize the staff who are with me tonight. Our Chief Financial Officer, Ricky Brown, who I think you've met before, and our Interim Vice President for Administration, Randy Collier, who you knew more recently as a Board of Trustees member at Pitt Community College. He's helping us out during a period we're searching for a new Vice President. So thank them for their help, and I'd be glad to answer any questions that you have. Thank you, Dr. Mass. It's a good report. Is there any questions? I would like to, not necessarily a question, but uh, you said uh, the two schools, of course, were <clears throat> over here and they're needed, but they're needed and I know they're needed very much at North Pitt. And I made the statement before when you were here, at North Pitt when I went there at the beginning when it opened up, we had approximately eight different trades taught at that school. Now you have maybe two or three. Mm -hmm. That is to me is totally out of whack. We need more of those courses for those students. What disturbs me though, and Commissioner Ward can get in on this. I, I'm not up to par on a lot of it. But the state of North Carolina has put all of these stipulations, you might say, so many math courses that they've got to pass now that they didn't have to pass back in those particular days. Uh, I have been, of course, you know, working, trying to get the state of North Carolina requires 21 units to fit, graduate from high school. Pitt County requires 28. Somebody has been working on it a little bit. Uh, and, uh, but that's one of the reasons that 
these kids, when they're there, you have, and the dropout, I think, since they've started working, has dropped down, so it's not as much as it was. But is there any possibility that you could increase that to these other? You have, uh, that's two, three, there are three more, four more schools that need also this help that you're giving to them. I think it's a wonderful idea, and I'm real pleased and proud that Big Community College has taken it upon themselves to take in the, go this route. Well, Commissioner James, I agree with you 100%. Uh, in fact, I just mentioned the new programs this, this fall. We've been offering welding technology at North Pitt for probably eight years, Good. and they're a strong partnership. And an interesting statistic, of the six uh, Pitt County high schools, North Pitt has the highest percentage of students who go to Pitt Community College upon yeah. graduation, higher than any of the others, almost 40%. Uh, and we're working to increase those numbers at some of the other high schools, but uh, we are doing a lot more at different high schools, and we're willing to, to try to do even more in the future. When I was there, I taught Metalworks, mm -hmm. and uh, I, all those courses were taught there, and they were very successful. And, um, but uh, I, I think you're on the right road. I think by doing that, you'll have less dropouts, you'll have less people going to jail, you have more people going to Pitt Community College to further their training. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you, Ms. Shane. Thank you, Dr. Matthew. <coughs> Phil, this next item is for report on, please. Thank you, Phil. <coughs> oh, my voice holds out. I'll try. Um, talking to you tonight about outsourcing HVAC maintenance and the energy savings contract. These two are very closely related and Yes, they, there's some overlap in certain areas. Um, first, I'd like to show you what Piedmont has done on HVAC maintenance. Uh, this is electrical consumption. The green lines are the, the year after Piedmont started work. The orange or pink lines are the year before. And you see in almost every case across the, um, the months, it's uh, considerably less after Piedmont started to work. The one exception to that is June, and, uh, or two exceptions. June and September, very likely that was due to weather. So you'll see something that looks abnormal as I go through these slides that is probably related to weather. Um, Phil, if I can just remind the board that a year ago, the, the county, more than a year ago, the county chose to outsource all of our HVAC functions that are housed within our building, buildings and grounds department. We had almost all the employees had um, retired or had left the employment of the county, so we had an opportunity where we put out to bid outsourcing that particular function of HVAC. So the numbers you're seeing here are a direct result from Piedmont Service Group and, and well, not partly them and the energy savings that Phil's going to talk about here in a minute. Yeah, I would say we actually, this particular study was actually done at an opportune time. Uh, phase one of the energy savings contract had been in effect for a while in phase two had not started. So a year-to-year -year comparison is fairly valid here after you take it into account the weather and those sorts of things. Um, this is gas consumption. You'll note that the year before bars are much higher in October and May here. Again, probably due to weather. Stayed, stayed warm late, got warm early that year. So that's that's a difference. Sam, feel free to interrupt me with your questions as I go along. Uh, be easier to answer them when you have them and, and wait to the end. Um, overall utility comparison, again, the green lines are the cost and the orange lines are the year before, the blue lines are two years before. And again, you'll note that the green lines in almost all cases are much lower much less cost, and these are 
most of this can be attributed to maintaining the equipment properly and keeping filters changed, et cetera. This totally monthly utility bills, again, green lines almost always shorter, lower utility bills. This last slide is a total monthly utilities, and, and again, the difference in cost, and for some reason this doesn't show up on my slide, but uh, the total difference in utility bills for the county office building the year after Piedmont started operating and maintaining our equipment and the year before was $73,399 less. Oh, it's on the next slide, all right. That's the number. Just to uh, kind of check back on these figures, I've been going to Sustainable Energy Conference probably for the last 12 years, and at two of those conferences, a group has presented a model illustrating the potential savings that you can derive from maintenance. The study was done on SAS Hall at NC State University area. It's about 115,000 square feet. It was constructed in 2009. This building is roughly the size of the county office building, just a little bit larger. So here's what they found. Fairly poorly maintained, their total utility bill would have been $297,852. Uh, <coughs> perfectly maintained, the utility bill would have been $164,000 a total of $133,850 difference. So again, reiterate, this is what good maintenance does. Uh, energy savings contract by Siemens. In fiscal year 2011-2012, you'll note the energy savings were calculated to be 363273 Our total cost, including Debt payment and measurement and verification were 322,000. Net difference of 41,273. This is throughout our system, not just the county office bill. Fiscal year 2010 11 of 447,460 in energy savings, 322,000 in cost, 125,460 difference across our system. That's actually money that that we can put in the bank, the right-hand column is. On contract two, we've made some further improvements, but we don't have enough data at this point to give you an analysis of that. But we, we feel sure that's working just as well as contract one. Um, <clears throat> so accomplishments for Piedmont and uh, Siemens. Piedmont maintained a higher degree of comfort, better indoor air quality. They saved energy and likely extended the life of some of our expensive equipment. Just a chiller might cost three, four hundred thousand dollars. So if it runs several years longer, that's that's a big savings. You can't consider in a performance contract on the savings side the cost of replacing equipment unless that equipment you can only consider energy savings so for example we needed to replace a cooling tower at the jail minimum um, minimum it took to address the issue the cooling tower was about two hundred thousand we put in about six or seven hundred thousand dollars worth of chillers they saved money on energy but we couldn't in our performance contract credit that $200,000 we would have had to pay for the chiller, I mean the, the cooling tower. Um, one thing about uh, comfort in, in indoor air quality, for many years we've had complaints on the legal hall, as long as Janice has been here, I'm sure. <laughs> we still have complaints, but they're now a lot less. The reason for it is that 
over the years we've had our HVAC people come to look at the problem. They've always said they've done all they could. Piedmont immediately found that there was a fan in the air handler running backwards. <laughs> they changed that for probably less energy. We we're getting more comfort. So that's that's one example. And I just showed you an example of saving energy and we've talked about extended life on equipment. Siemens that saved energy. Again, they increased comfort in indoor air quality. We've got better control like our buildings leaked air. They've weatherized, they've um, installed more efficient equipment and uh, enabled the county to replace its equipment and pay for it with energy savings. Go back to the chillers at the jail. Energy savings somewhere else paid for the, those chillers. We would have had to have forked out the money out of the general fund to, or the jail fund to replace those um, chillers in the absence of um, the energy savings contract. So now we've got new chillers and they're paying for themselves as we go along. Any questions? I think you've been very thorough. The main thing I gleaned from the field is the fact that you're saving money. And that was the idea of having this. If there are any further questions, we'll take them. If not, we'll go on to the next matter. What's the floor? It's pleasure. I, I just think also we ought to add to that, Mr. Chairman, that not only have we saved money, but we have increased the comfort of the employees, which, you know, it wasn't that we weren't trying. And I'm sure there are many other things that could be done, but I just think it's one of our finer moments. Absolutely. When we made this decision to do this. Thank you, Phil. The legitimate complaints have been reduced almost to zero. Good. Uh, Dwayne. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, uh, commissioners. Before you, uh, in your packet, you have the monthly financial report for the general fund as of March 31st. 2014. Uh, this report does reflect nine months of activity. Uh, we've uh, completed three quarters or 75 percent of our fiscal year. And uh, year-to-date numbers uh, through March 31st, uh, we have uh, collected uh, in, an, in an adjusted manner. And, and when I say in an adjusted manner, remember we do have the proceeds from our revenue anticipation note <clears throat> booked in our revenues. So when we make adjustments for that, we have collected at a re uh, revenues at a rate of 77.5%, and uh, our expenditures have been uh, spent at a, um, a rate of 69.5%. We are uh, still in a positive trend. We have slowed down in comparison to prior year a bit, um, but we still anticipate being able to positively add to fund balance. Uh, one of the things that did is I isolated our looking at our revenues and expenses from year to year um, our revenues uh, are right uh, right at or just above where we were last fiscal year when adjustments are made and uh, we're spending just a little bit more uh, than we did uh, in the last fiscal year uh, another note that I'll bring to your attention if you try to compare uh, Ms. Booker gave you your tax collection report uh, previously and if you're trying to make a one one to one or one for one comparison of ad valorem and looking at the top line of your ad valorem uh, monthly financial report it's not apples to apples because keep in mind with the new tax and tag or tag and tax I forget they I think they changed I think it's tag and tax uh, actually uh, the monthly tax collection report only will reflect those revenues that the county directly levies. And since the state has taken over that responsibility, we're not technically levying that tax. So that's not included in her report. So you'll see where uh, the uh, tax administration has collected $74.7 million in ad valorem taxes. And if you look at the top line of your monthly financial report, you'll see we've booked $76 million in ad valorem. That difference represents the tag and tax revenue that we're also booking into that line. So, Do we have a motion for approval? I say motion. move. Second. 
Any discussion? Not let's vote. Thank you, Don. <coughs> Mr. Elliott. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just a couple items to report on on the next meeting dates. The regular meeting dates will be May 5th and then May 19th, and May 5th meeting at 9 a.m., May 19th at 6 p.m. In regard to your budget workshops, we have um, have adjusted those based upon polling the board. There were several conflicts in the week of May the 6th, or actually starting Monday the 5th. Um, so on the week of May the 5th, your first workshop will be on Wednesday the 7th, and then the second one will be on, on Thursday the 8th. There will be no workshops on Tuesday or Friday that week. And then the following week on Monday the 12th and then Tuesday the 13th we will resume back. Um, and these are, after pulling the board, I think the, the clerk and I determined that we would um, have half-day workshops rather than full full day. It's kind of all over the place, but just trying to, to um, respect the wishes of the board and those um, um, working as well. Had two other items, um, good news item um, on Dwayne Holder. He graduated from the UNC School of Government's um, City County um, Government class this past um, Week and this is a nine month course, about 150 hours of, of time logged in the classroom at Chapel Hill. And um, he's now joins one of 2,900 graduates of that, that program. So, I want to congratulate him on his, his efforts in doing that. The other item I just want to quickly just make a mention of um, I'm sure everybody saw in the paper several weeks ago that Reginald Gray, former county manager, died. Mr. Gray had actually worked for Pitt County government for 33 years, I believe he retired about 1984, and in his, his last capacity was his county manager, but he held several offices from the beginning, um, everything from tax collector to register of deeds to manager to HR director, and he'd come in and visit me every, every now and then and tell stories of when he was here and said that he normally wore those hats all at the same time, one laid on top of the other. But obviously through time, as the county grew and need grew for additional personnel and department heads, those functions were separated out into either appointed, elected, or board hired positions. So I want to recognize him, his contributions, and what he did for Pitt County government. That's all I have. Next is consent agenda. Motion, Motion to approve. Second. Second. All right, let's vote. All right. You got anything? Yes, sir. Commissioner's report. I'm, uh, I'm sorry, items for decision. I don't have that sheet. Okay, uh, Dwayne and Dr. Massey join, I believe, is on this one. Um, Pitt Community College has uh, approached us with a request to access a portion of their uh, fund balance uh, for a project at the Vernon White building and uh, Commissioner, um, not Commissioner, President uh, Massey is here if anyone has any questions. Thank you, Mr. Holder. Uh, as you see in your, your uh, request, this is a, uh, uh, an ask for uh, about 160000 from our fund balance. Our fund balance is projected in June of 2014 at 767000 uh, that represents about 14.4% of our county budget. So this will reduce the, the percentage of our uh, fund balance, but I think it, it is for a great cause, and that is apropos of the previous topic with Mr. Dickerson, an energy management system for Vernon White. Vernon White Building is our oldest building on campus, constructed in 1964, and uh, anybody who's been in that building knows it's a real challenge with the way it's been divided up and uh, it's utilized currently. Uh, this energy management system will be able to realize a complete payback in a little less than four years. So we're really uh, optimistic about this and feel that it's a great investment for us to make. Right. That's your presentation? Yes. Yeah, I'd I was like trying to make to a motion that to, to give him permission <laughs> like to do this. All right. Any further discussion? Not let's vote. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. All right, uh, Ms. Booker again. <laughs> Due to the implementation of the new tag and tax together program, new interlocal 
tax collection agreements have been prepared and have been approved by each of the following municipalities. Pitt County Tax Administration bills and collects the municipal property taxes on real and personal property on behalf of Bethel, Falkland, Grimesland, and Simpson, as well as motor vehicle and gross receipts. The municipalities of Aden, Farmville, Fountain, Grifton, and Winterville collect their own property taxes for real and personal property. A limited version of the collection agreement to address only motor vehicles and gross receipts has been approved by those municipalities. Do we have a motion on these resolutions? So moved. So, second. All right, let's vote. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, Mr. McLawhorn, I believe you're next. Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, on the Human Relations Commission, uh, I certainly would like to support the mission of a Human Relations Council for Pitt County, but I would like to make a motion at this time that our manager and staff analyze the data that has been presented to the commissioners to, in to include the financing of such a council and how it could best fit here in Pitt County. And I would like, Ms. Man Mr. Chairman, to ask the manager to bring this back to our board within uh, the next 30 days. Second. Right. Any discussion? All right, let's vote. All right, uh, Mr. Elliott. Okay. Um, the next one is appointments to the Pitt County Physical Activity and Nutrition Coalition on page 83 of your packet. You'll see where the it's being recommended that Georgia Childs and Jordan Baker be um, appointed to the coalition. Um, it's noted that Karen Warren is retired and will no longer be on the coalition. Pleasure to board. Motion to appoint Georgia Childs and Jordan Baker to I'll the second D.C. It. Physical Activity. Any, any other appointments? If not, let's vote. All right. Uh, Ms. Booker, we're going to make it your night, I believe. This is concerning appointment of the alternate member to the Pitt County Board of Equalization and Review. It is recommended that Mr. Danny Smith be appointed to serve as an alternate member to the Board of Equalization and Review. If appointed, he will fill an unexpired term which expires 2-28-16. It is noted that there is another alternate member seat vacant due to a lack of interested applicants, an advertisement will run to fill this spot and will be brought forth at a future meeting. We recommend that Mr. Danny Smith be appointed to serve as alternate to the Board of Equalization and Review. Board's pleasure. I say no. Second. Let's vote. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. All right, uh, Mr. Elliott, you've got the Next, six. Yes, on the um, Nursing Home Adult Care Community Advisory <coughs> Committee, um, the Tamika Rigsby, the long-term care ombudsman, is recommending that Monica Miller be appointed to serve on this committee for initial one-year term. Mr. Chairman, I also move that Monica Miller be appointed to this committee. Right. Second. Ready to vote? Okay. Now we are down to uh, commissioner's comments. Uh, Mr. Garris? Uh, no comment. No comment. Uh, Mr. Chairman, tomorrow I'll travel to Raleigh and I'll meet with David Lewis, the finance chairman with the North Carolina House, as well as Governor Pat McCrory to discuss uh, county goals and objectives with our association, uh, including lottery money and road construction dollars. Ms. Moore? Um, I probably should have said something a while ago, but I certainly do support. Um, Mr. McLaughlin's motion and I just would like to suggest that maybe the um, organizations and groups that were uh, mentioned here tonight in relevance to this I'd like for them to sort of include a side report of um, ways we are already you know supporting some of those organizations like the um, disabled veterans and that sort of thing. Just a suggestion and not something that I think we have to vote on. All right, Mr. Coles? Nothing. No Ms. Jane, Dave? Uh, if, if not, uh, thank everyone for coming. Uh, do we have a motion I move to adjourn? for adjournment. Second. All right, Second. let's vote. Thank you. Is Mark got a record? No.